The example we're going to solve right now is a simple start-stop motor. It says the motor has to start when a start switch is normally open, momentary switch is pressed. It will stay running when a start is released. Anytime the stop switch is again a normally open, momentary switch is pressed, the motor will stop. As you notice from this problem, all the inputs and outputs involved are all digital. So it makes sense to have a visual a visualization that all the instructions that we need to use in the solution will consist of examine if close, examine if opens, and of course OTEs for the output. From this simple observation, we know that in this problem it only includes one output. So we can expect a ladder program that consists only of one rung that's going to be used to refer to the motor. And if you remember, the best approach we are going to follow in solving this problem and building the ladder logic for it will be by simplifying it into minor problems or different requirements and by the, after doing this we are going to translate this English requirement into binary. So what I will do right now I'm going to read the problem again and I'm going to highlight the English terms that refer to the states of the inputs and outputs in each one of these requirements. So it says a motor is to start. Here you go. The first term is start. It refers to the state of the motor which is the output that we want to achieve. If the start which is normally open, normally open, it means it will read zero into the PLC memory, close when pressed, is pressed. It will stay running when start is released. Anytime the stop which is normally open, closed when pressed, the motor will stop. So right now, here you go. After highlighting these terms, I'm going to divide this problem into minor requirements and I'm going to start solving the problem. So the first requirement is the following. A motor is to change to one. Start translates in binary to one. When start, which is normally zero, changes to one. That's the first requirement. Right now, I'm not going to continue with the other requirements of the problem. What I will do, I will start building my ladder solution to fulfill this requirement. If you remember from earlier tutorials, we said in the ladder diagram, each rung will consist of two main sections, an output section and an input section. And we are going to s always start from the output section. So as per this requirement, the, the output involved is the motor. So we need to go ahead and insert the instruction, the correct instruction that refers to motor. And as the only instruction that we have covered so far is the OTE, we are going to use the OTE without, with no further analysis. We're not done yet. We need to add the input to fulfill this requirement completely. And as per uh, earlier tutorials, if you remember, we mentioned that the input section can further be divided into two main sections, which are an on section or an off section. Please recall that these divisions are only virtual divisions. It means in our planning, we are going to group all of the inputs that are responsible to energize the motor all together and all the inputs that are responsible to de-energize the motor together. So as per this requirement, it says a motor is to change to one when a start changes to one. The input involved in this requirement is the start. And as you can see, as the name implies, start is responsible to start the motor. It means we need to add an accessory instruction that refers to start among the inputs within the on section. The question is right now, XIC or XIO? Remember, examine if closed instruction will be used anytime you want an output, to the state of the output to follow the state of the input. In other words, if you want the output to de-energize when the input changes its state to zero or to open, an XIC is to be used. Also use an XIC if you want to energize an output when the input changes to one. On the other hand, use an XIO for an inverse relationship. In other words, if you want to energize an output when the input changes to zero or to the open state, an XIO is used. Or if you want to de-energize an output when the input goes to the closed state to one, again, an XIO is to be used. Now for the, for the start, XIC or XIO, what's going to decide this is the requirement itself. It says the motor is to change to one when the input changes to one. So please remember, and 
that's the main concept that I want you folks to remember. When we consider which instruction to use, the, the, the state that we need to take into consideration for the input is the changed state, not the default state. So default state is zero. When the, for start, open switch, that's a zero. When you press that button, it will close, it will change to one. Uh, this is the state I need to take into consideration. So the requirement right now changes to be a motor is to change to one. One start changes to one. As you can see, the XIC is the instruction that fulfill this requirement. And hence, I need to go ahead and use an XIC for this instruction. I hope this makes sense for you folks right now. The second requirement is the following. The motor has to stay one when start goes back to zero. Remember this, anytime you energize an output using a momentary switch, like in this case, the start, which is a normally open momentary switch, or due to a momentary condition, and you want to maintain that the output on after that momentary condition goes to false, it's a very simple implementation. All what you have to do, you need to bypass the instruction that you used to energize this output, in this case the start, with an instruction which is parallel to it. And this one always refers to the output. So as you can see, this instruction has the same tag name as the output, which is in this case the motor. And we are going to use an XIC for it. To illustrate this concept, I'm going to have another tutorial, the concept of the scan sequence. And this will illustrate the concept of latching over there. But for the time being, that's how you do it. Now we're not done yet. The third requirement is the following. Anytime the stop, which is normally open, is pressed, so it changes to one, the motor will go to zero. So one more time, w we need to decide which instruction to use for the stop. The first thing we need to decide, where does the stop instruction belong? Does it belong to the on section or the off section? As you can see, stop is responsible to turn off the motor. So it makes sense that the in instruction we're going to use for that refers to the stop will belong to the off section. One more time, XIC or XIO, what, will this, what is going to decide this is, our, is us, but based on the requirement. And what does it say? It says the stop. When the stop changes to one, I want the motor to go to zero. Or I want the motor to go to zero when stop goes to one. You can look into this uh, the way that you want, but do you see the inverse relationship? You want the motor to stop or go to zero when the stop is pressed to goes to one. You want the motor to go to zero when the input, which is the stop, goes to one. One more time, the, we need to take the changed state of the input into consideration. This inverse relationship is, ba is correctly fulfilled using the examine of open. So that's your solution right now. As you can see right now, after dividing this problem into minor problems, and solving each one alone, all what you have done right now is figure out the, the full solution for this problem using the minor solutions for each one alone. Right now we can go ahead and complete the rung and that's the solution we're looking for for this problem. Right now I'm going to demonstrate this solution on the software as well, just to double check that our analysis is actually correct and all the instructions that we have placed right now in our solution uh, are the proper instructions. Both the start and the stop switches are normally open push button switches. That's why they will be read into the PLC memory as logic zero, as you can see to the left side of the screen. Similarly, once we put the PLC into run mode and if the start button is not pressed, the motor will be in the off state, uh, which is driven by logic zero in the PLC memory. Now, if you look at the XIC instruction referring to the start, it's showing false. The reason? because this instruction will keep examining if start is closed, hence the name XIC exam if closed. As long as start is in the open state, this instruction will be false. With a similar analysis, the XIC instruction referring to motor in the latch, which is the parallel instruction parallel to start, is showing false as well. The reason, because this one keeps examining if motor is in the one state or the on state. Same thing, it's not, that's why it's false. If you look at the examine of open referring to the stop, it's a different situation right now. This is examining if stop is open. And yes, it is open. That's why it's showing true in the instruction uh, referring to the stop. Now, 
anytime I decide or the operator decide to push on the start button right now it will be read and as one in the PLC memory and that's why the XIC instruction referring to start shows as true as you can see on the screen so one more time logic continuity exists the motor is on as long as I'm holding the start you can see the examine if close instruction referring to start being true anytime I let go it goes back to open so the XIC instruction goes to false this does not turn off the motor because of the latch that we have in place so right now as you as you can see the XIC instruction referring to motor is showing true because the motor is in the on state which is logic one now anytime I decide to hit the stop button right now as you can see as long as it's open it's zero the XIO is true you push that button it's closed right now the XIO changes to false it breaks the rung and the motor goes back goes to the end to the off state here you go that's the solution in rs logic 5000